Yes, this is not the first time China's Keqiao 2 launch mission has been explained. This is a very important mission for China's subsequent lunar exploration mission. According to the disclosed data, the strength of Keqiao 2 is also much improved compared to Keqiao. Its Keqiao 2 relay satellite weighs about 1.2 tons, has an antenna length of about 4.2 meters, and a design life of 8 years. It carries an extreme ultraviolet camera, an array neutral atom imager, and a terrestrial VLBI test system. According to the plan, it will be held in March 2024, which can be regarded as entering the countdown stage. The most typical task of Keqiao 2 is to ensure that Chang'e 6, 7, and 8 missions provide relay communication services. Of course, this is only a basic operation. After the Chang'e 6 mission, Keqiao will undergo a transformation process. According to the plan, after the Chang'e 6 mission is completed, Keqiao 2 will choose an opportunity to adjust its orbit to provide services for Chang'e 7, Chang'e 8 and subsequent lunar exploration missions. In addition, Keqiao 2 will also provide relay communication services for Chang'e 4 and U22, which are exploring the far side of the moon. This shows that Keqiao 2 does not perform its mission in one zone, but can also perform orbit changes in space if it wants to meet the requirements. This is really awesome. It can maneuver and change orbit on the orbit and adjust it according to needs. Compared with ordinary satellites, this has obviously improved its strength a lot. At the same time, it will employ unique space frequency bands, using X and UHF bands to communicate with spacecraft and S and Ka bands to communicate with Earth, with multiple data rates and reconfigurable software. At the same time, in this mission, China is not only launching the Keqiao 2 alone, but also doing lunar communications. Two satellites, Tiandu 1 and Tiandu 2, will be launched together to test lunar communications and navigation payloads. Therefore, I am quite looking forward to the fact that China will carry out a multi-satellite mission with one arrow, and I also look forward to China being able to carry out the mission perfectly. With the establishment of Keqiao 2, China actually has a more powerful space system construction. To build a lunar satellite constellation, Keqiao will be simultaneously modified to build satellites in the L2 point area of the balance point of China's Earth, Moon Tribody System. After Keqiao 2, there is another most critical mission for China Keqiao 3, which will be more powerful and will fully open China's deep space network. According to China's space network plan, after its establishment, China will not only support the basic development of the Moon, but also support the Mars and Venus networks. This is powerful, there are signals on it, and the signals are provided through high-speed laser links. China's satellite layout is not superficial, but goes into deep space. However, what many people did not expect was that the United States was also anxious and requested to use the Chinese Keqiao because this is related to the United States moon landing. In fact, this is not the first time that the United States has requested the use of China's Keqiao. The United States once made a request to China, hoping that China would extend the design life of the Keqiao relay satellite from three years to five years. Of course, Chinese aerospace expert Wu Weirin said, the United States has stated that they are preparing to go to the back of the moon and hope to use this relay star by then. If the United States did not have China's Keqiao satellite, it would be difficult to land on the moon. And in 2023, Lu Jingxiang, a Malaysian associate researcher at the University of Science and Technology of China, revealed a piece of news that is. China has agreed to requests from NASA and other national aerospace agencies to use Keqiao 
to help them complete future lunar exploration missions. If the United States really wants to use the Chinese Magpie Bridge, many people will be confused. The United States is so powerful and the moon landing is so important, why not build it by themselves? Indeed, it is not difficult for the United States to manufacture relay satellites, and there is a reason why the United States has repeatedly requested the use of China's Keqiao. To put it bluntly, a key issue is wanting to save grocery shopping money. It can be seen from the situation of the United States' return to the moon plan that the funding problem faced by the United States is already very serious. Even with the increasing costs and some technical problems, it is a big doubt that the United States will complete the moon landing before 2025. In 2023, it was already reported that the United States may land on the moon before 2027. Therefore, the running in of various projects in the United States is not consistent and the support is not enough. If the United States develops a relay satellite on its own, including launch and operation, it will cost at least hundreds of millions of dollars. NASA's current budget is tight, and it is obviously much more cost-effective to seek cooperation from China. Of course, the United States' proposal for cooperation is also based on its recognition of Magpie Bridge and China's aerospace industry. But when establishing this issue, the United States actually has to refer to Chinese standards. Yang Yuguang, a researcher at the Second Academy of China Aerospace Science and Industry Corporation, previously said that their detector design, for example, must also refer to the Magpie Bridge standard and comply with characteristics such as communication capacity and return code rate. Therefore, this also poses a dilemma to the United States. If it wants to use China's Magpie Bridge, it must follow China's steps. Of course, China's agreement with the United States to use the Keqiao is also quite surprising. Many people may not understand it. Isn't it because China and the United States are not cooperating? Why can the United States still use China's Keqiao too? From the perspective of aerospace development, China's aerospace industry will open its mind to the world and hopes to cooperate on all projects. Anyway, no matter how you explain it, one thing has been pointed out, that is China's aerospace industry has always maintained an open attitude. Some things may be let go, but some may not be, it depends on how to measure them. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more great content. See you next time.